Uganda together. Oi, Tabu, Tuna Marilisa. And what are you doing throwing papers all over the place? I'm looking for an invoice for a sound system and cables that I received yesterday. But I can't find it. You know there is a way of keeping all this in one place and available to you as and when you need it. I really wish there was one. Because the way these invoices grow legs and disappear. I believe this is what you're looking for. Eh? eh? Now how did it get there? Tabo! Do you know that with Efris, you can stay on track of all your business transactions and improve on your record keeping? How so? Katituliku computer with Efris. I just search using the fiscal document number and I retrieve the records I'm looking for. Bookkeeping becomes simple after that. Ah, kapo, also mie. I began using URS Kakasa solutions and now I'm in charge of my business and you can as well. Kakasa, be sure you are in charge of your business. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. <laughs> That's my little angel rose. Together with millions of other children, my daughter Rose is assured of learning something new every day. Moses, my husband, just like many other commercial farmers, has his business supported so he can provide for us. When my other little one was on the way, even with my pregnancy complications, it was a quick, smooth ride to Mulago Specialized Women and Neonatal Hospital. Also, my new baby was able to make it through his first days with the help of specialized equipment thanks to the reliable electricity which has also been extended throughout the country. All this and more has been made possible because of you. Join us and together let's do more for our country. Get your free tin at www.ura.go.ug. Thank you for paying your taxes. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. I'm called Natmanya Skovia. I came to get a team. I was passing by and I saw a bus. So I was forced to come here and get one. It was not hectic because it didn't take much time. Like five minutes or less. Very happy. I'm still training with National Water and without a team, you cannot be employed. I encourage everyone out there who is not having a team to come and register because I know the world that is coming without a team you will not be able to do anything. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. Acquiring a tin is now easier than ever before with a new interface that is brief, simple and cuts out all the excess fields from previous applications. All you need is your national ID or driver's license or passports and internet access and you're good to go. No more waiting in long queues as you can now acquire a tin instantly from wherever you are. Remember, it's free! Experience our new and improved modern interface that is user-friendly. Thank you for paying your taxes. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. In chess, the small one can become the big one. It's the same here. 
and here too. Watch every move. Record every number so you can plan better. No matter the size of your dream, Tomorrow's success belongs to those who keep today's records clean. File your returns today. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. Tonight. I slept looking for a receipt up to now I'm still looking for it. What kind of receipt? There is a certain receipt I need to file my returns. I'm trying to find it. By the way, do you know these guys of you are asked for three million from me? Me, I paid five hundred thousand only. You mean you pay only five hundred thousand? Yes. They asked for three million. Why am I being asked to pay more? I don't know. You must know. We have the same level of capital, same rent, same premises. We even meet the same expenses. Why am I being taxed more? I don't know. But for me, I sent my income and expenses via the URA website. Uh, so they are punishing me because I did not send that through the website? Mugisha, you know these things. You know the type of expenses we go through here. I know. But how will URA believe you if you don't write them down? or keep records for your receipt as proof eh, for your income and expenses for your butchery. No, Gisha. You mean you write all these things down? Yes, I do. I write every detail. You see, the good, the amount, and the person involved. But uh, where do you get the time to write all this? Immediately the transaction is done, or at the end of the day. But at minimum, I must know the income and expenses for each day. Otherwise, it is very easy to forget or confuse. So, this is how your tax is being reduced? Actually, it automatically, automatically shows me the tax I have to pay. Eh? Without reducing my business capital. It also helps me not mix my business money with the money I get from the garden. Aha. Do you know that this book is showing me that you haven't paid me the carton of soda I advanced you last hey, month? Mugasha. You also remember that? Yes. This book helps me to remember every detail about this show. Huh? Mugasha. Guy, you know things and you don't even tell me. You didn't ask. Eh? Try it. You'll thank me later. <laughs> Let me first deal with the customer. But, Wiri, don't forget to pay the URA tax in time. <laughs> I won't. I will not. Okay. You can have revenue with the redeem. Thanks you. Thanks you. For being taxi. Kapo, you seem to be in a hurry. Where are you going to? I'm going to pay URA a visit. Why would anyone visit URA? Of all places? To know more about the Kakasa Business Solutions, namely digital tracking solution, the voluntary disclosure program and electronic fiscal receipting, and invoicing solution, which have turned my business around. You know I need to be on top of my game to protect my empire. <laughs> yeah, if you know, you know. I too need to know what Kapo knows. Kakasa, be sure. You are in charge of your business. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. Wait, Abu. And what are you doing throwing papers all over the place? 
I'm looking for an invoice for a sound system and cables that I received yesterday, but I can't find it. You know there is a way of keeping all this in one place and available to you as and when you need it. I really wish there was one, because the way these invoices grow legs and disappear. I believe this is what you're looking for. Eh? eh? Now how did it get there? Tabo! Do you know that with Efris, you can stay on track of all your business transactions and improve on your record keeping? How so? Katituliku computer with Efris. I just search using the fiscal document number and I retrieve the records I'm looking for. Bookkeeping becomes simple after that. Ah, kapo, awesome, yeah. I began using URS Kakasa solutions and now I'm in charge of my business and you can as well. Kakasa, be sure you are in charge of your business. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. <laughs> That's my little angel rose. Together with millions of other children, my daughter Rose is assured of learning something new every day. Moses, my husband, just like many other commercial farmers, has his business supported so he can provide for us. When my other little one was on the way, even with my pregnancy complications, it was a quick, smooth ride to Mulago Specialized Women and Neonatal Hospital. Also, my new baby was able to make it through his first days with the help of specialized equipment thanks to the reliable electricity which has also been extended throughout the country. All this and more has been made possible because of you. Join us and together let's do more for our country. Get your free tin at www.ura.go.ug Thank you for paying your taxes. Uganda Revenue Authority Developing Uganda together. I'm called Natmanya Skovia. I came to get a team. I was passing by and I saw a bus. So I was forced to come here and get one. It was not hectic because it didn't take much time. Like five minutes or less. Very happy. I'm still training with National Water and without a team, you cannot be employed. I encourage everyone out there who is not having a team to come and register because I know the world that is coming without a team will not be able to do anything. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. Acquiring a tin is now easier than ever before with a new interface that is brief, simple, and cuts out all the air. I'm called Natmanya Skovia. Acquiring a tin is now easier than ever before with a new interface that is brief, simple, and cuts out all the excess fields from previous applications. All you need is your national ID or driver's license or passports and internet access and you're good to go. No more waiting in long queues as you can now acquire a tin instantly from wherever you are. Remember, it's free. Experience our new and improved modern interface that is used friendly thank you for paying your taxes Uganda Revenue Authority developing Uganda together Kapo you seem to be in a hurry where are you going to I'm gonna pay you a visit why would anyone visit you are a of all places to know more about the Kakasa business solutions namely digital tracking solution the voluntary disclosure program and electronic fiscal receipting and invoicing solution which have turned my business around. You know I need to be on top of my game to protect my empire. <laughs> yeah, if you know, you know. I too need to know what Kapo knows. Kakasa, be sure you are in charge of your business. Uganda Revenue Authority, developing Uganda together. Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar, our tax mochuzi, where we are going to be talking about the tax obligations of a small and medium mm -hmm. business. My name is Rita Muzira from URA and with me in studio is Hafsa Seguya, our tax expert. But before we go into the, the discussions, we are live on our YouTube channel. Uh, URA TV, we are also live on our Facebook page, URA page, and also live on Zoom. So, Hafsa, uh, say 
you can greet our viewers and then we start off our discussion. Good afternoon, our viewers. This afternoon, we are glad to be with you once again here to discuss uh, issues related to taxation. My name is Hafsa Seguia from the Tax Literacy Unit, resident in the Depa domestic, Depa mm -hmm. uh, domestic Taxes Department. And uh, we will be taking you through uh, what your obligations are, um, what mm -hmm. you need to do here and there, because um, we are looking at walking the journey with you so that we can uh, achieve uh, economic independence as a country mm -hmm. through paying your share fare of taxes. Thank you, Hajat. Uh, the topic today is tax obligations for a small and medium enterprise. But before you know your tax obligations, we need to know who is a small taxpayer, who is a medium taxpayer. So Hafsa, that's where we are going to begin from. In the URA, URA's lens, who is a small taxpayer and who is a medium taxpayer? Mm, thank you very much. Normally mm. when we are looking at uh, small, mm. uh, we are looking at uh, that taxpayer who ranges within um, uh, exceeding 10 million but not exceeding uh, 50 mi 150 million. Mm. That is normally small, but mm. uh, ideally when we are addressing them, we normally address them small and micro. So uh, when we are looking at the micro bit of it, we look at one who may exceed the 150, but does not exceed the 500 million. So ideally, that is uh, the bracket where we look at those who are just coming up as our clients. Uh, because we have the medium, that is when we look at the 10 to 30 million band, as in 10 mm -hmm. to 30 million, uh, th 10 to 30 billion, as in turnover, then exceeding 30 billion, that will be the light taxpayer. So ideally today we are um, basically focusing on those that are small and are micro to see how best we can help them uh, uh, up their compliance mm -hmm. after registration. We all know when uh, one registers, they may think that is all, mm -hmm. but your registration comes with uh, obligations. Mm -hmm. It comes with rights. Mm -hmm. Rights is basically what you expect from the institution. And... Um, most of it is our obligation, what we expect from you after registration. Because ideally when you register, it implies that you are starting business or you are going to start already started. So we want to walk this journey with you to ensure that your compliancy is the best. Looking at keeping your records, uh, giving us returns as and when they are due, paying what is the result and tax in case it's there in the right time to avoid the penalties, to avoid the interests. Um, so that is basically what we are going to look at today and uh, maybe looking at post-registration. So when I'm looking at this small and uh, micro client, I'm looking at a client who is, um, who is uh, transacting in cash mostly. I am looking at a client who has a few or may not keep proper records. I am looking at a client who is uh, mobile from one place to the other. I am looking at a client whose uh, gross turnover may not exceed 150 million. Hafsa, that is where my you are comes. talking about uh, gross turnover. Can you just uh, share with us what is turnover? Gross turnover is I am looking at your sales. So when I take an example of a year, Mm -hmm. Say I'm talking about 2021, 20, 2022. Mm -hmm. That's the current year we are running. Mm -hmm. So I look at you from 1st July. What were your sales in July running through up mm -hmm. to December, then from January up to um, April. Then I wait for the next two months to end. So I look at your sales for the last 12 years of that particular year that will constitute your gross income. The reason why I'm talking about gross is we just add it up mm. before we could deduct any allowable expenses in case they are there. Mm. Because to any businesses, there should be expenses that help you generate that income. Mm. So gross is when I am looking at that income before deductions are made. Now, Hafsa, in, in, uh, a situation can come up. I want to start up business. I don't even know how much I'm going to make in a year. Yes. How would you determine that I fall under the category of a small and micro? 
What what happens when 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 we register this client? Ideally, we for us as you are, we look at tax types first. Mm -hmm. Which tax type are we registering you for? Mm. So ideally, most of the things that we issue out have uh, income tax with them, because uh, when you are starting business, to anybody who starts business, you start it with an intention of getting income. So when you get income, that is the income I'm going to tax. And that is where it derives the name income tax. Okay. So that is why you will start with income tax. As mm -hmm. we see how you will be moving on, then we see whether other tax types may it come in eligible mm -hmm. for registration as your turnover grows, grows to a particular magnitude. But mm -hmm. for starters, mm -hmm. at least the majority have income tax. So, And when you start to transact or you start to trade, mm -hmm. That's when we say keep simple business records yeah. because these are the records that are going to inform you how much you have managed to sell, okay. how much you have managed to collect. So depending on where they have put you mm -hmm. will determine if you are to fill, say, a presumptive return, then uh, fill it and see what the result and tax will be. At times, you may not even make the 10 million. So ideally, it implies that when you fill my presumptive return mm -hmm. at the end of the year, you will have fulfilled the obligation of filing, mm. but however, there is no tax to pay because mm. your, your, your sales are way below the threshold for presumptive. Okay. Mm. Why is it a big deal that I have to register? Why is it a big deal that yeah. you have to register? One, you have to, you have to clearly separate your business from another person's business. One, mm. Two, when you're trying to advertise for your business, how will you advertise for a business that doesn't have a name? So it takes me back to, before you register, get a business name for your business by registering it with Uganda Registration Services Bureau. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I will give you a TIN as URA, which we give you for free. Then you register and start trade. And secondly, when you don't register, you may not be able to transact with the bigger companies because ideally, they need somebody who has a fixed place of a board. Where will they get you? Once they give you a transaction, mm -hmm. say maybe handle this tender, you're going to supply us this. But mm -hmm. they need to know you in depth. Where will we get you? Mm -hmm. And secondly, before even reaching that stage, they'll ask for a tax clearance. Who is going to give you that tax clearance when you're not registered? Because a tin is the starter of everything. Because when you want the tax clearance, you come to URA. Mm -hmm. And the first question will be, what is your tin? Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a team, then actually you don't have business with URA. Absolutely. So that means you won't get that particular contract. Yeah. So registration has uh, many benefits at the end of it all. And maybe um, on the other side, since URA is operating a self-assessment regime, you will be at liberty to assess yourself. Tell us what happened, and what happened is what we will take. How much did you manage to sell? If you tell us five million. Mm -hmm. Put it in the return. That is what we will take and wait for you the following year. That means for that particular year, there is nothing much you're going to pay us. So ideally, the registration helps you in many ways mm -hmm. before even the taxman comes. Mm -hmm. The registration mm -hmm. helps you. Okay. How yes. do they register? Uh, registration and, is, uh, mm -hmm. one, we need to know you as in who are you as an individual. Mm -hmm. So we need something or a document that talks about you. That's an identification. So when you have a national ID, well and good. If you don't have it, we have other types of IDs. We have the, the passport. We need mm -hmm. a valid passport, a valid driver's license, an employment ID. But the most common is uh, when one is getting, say, a TIN, mm -hmm. we have the instant TIN that helps those in business. Once you have a national ID, you're good to go with uh, a contact. We need a phone number. Mm -hmm. If you could add on an email, well and good, it's okay. Then we, we do the registration within five minutes, you have your TIN. That is not also another avenue. But for those that could be in employment, you could resort to um, the other application, the Excel-based application, where you could give us more details about your employment through mm -hmm. that kind of registration. So can I register in the comfort of my home? Should I yes, come you to can. URA? Because I heard you, uh, we are working with... Uh, Uganda <clears throat> Registration Services Bureau. Exactly. You can, you can do it online mm -hmm. at the comfort of your home because uh, these, uh, 
these uh, applications are basically to ease business. Mm -hmm. It does not call for coming to your areas and when you need it. Mm -hmm. You just sit in the comfort of your home and access a portal once you have a machine that is uh, aided with the internet. internet mm -hmm. Then uh, you can speak to us by putting in that application. Even other applications are like that. You could be wanting to apply for a TCC. Mm -hmm. You could be wanting to do an amendment to other tax type. You don't need to come to us. You only speak to us, initiate the transaction via your side. Then we will contact you to see how best we can locate you in case probably we may need an inspection of some sort at mm -hmm. your business premises. That is if I'm an individual or yes. even for a company. Even for so a company choose... because it depends on what the amendment is uh, pushing us into. For mm -hmm. example, if, you could, if you're putting in an amendment to add a tax type, say VAT, say uh, local excise duty, we need to do an inspection. Mm -hmm. Why do we need to do an inspection? These are some of the things we call the post-registration uh, uh, facilities that we offer. Because we do that after the first registration that we did of giving you a team, then we go on adding other tax type as and when they fold you, say VAT. The reason why for VAT we need to inspect you, one, we need to confirm whether where you told us you're working from is, is still the same place you're working from. Mm -hmm. And we go ahead and ask for a tenancy agreement to confirm that actually you haven't stage managed the place mm -hmm. for this interview, but actually we'll get you there even tomorrow. In the event that you don't have a tenancy agreement, we could call for rental receipts. Mm -hmm. At least that show us that you paid for maybe the last six months mm -hmm. or a year. In that same place, we we'll need to look at uh, your audited uh, accounts for the last maybe two years. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we'll also need to look at your trading license to confirm that actually the space in which we are is yours and we need to look at... Uh, the business records that you maintain. Mm. And maybe for VAT, the other thing we'll need uh, if it's registration. It okay. goes hand in hand with VAT mm. because ideally there is no way you're going to return or give us this monthly return that does face. not come through mm. physicalized documentation. Mm. So we need to take it in a package. We want you to be of sound mind. So that's why we interview you to mm. see whether what we are speaking connects, connects with what you're saying. Exactly, connects with what mm. you're saying and you can be the right person and proper fit and proper mm. to fill in that return for us on a monthly basis. Wow. So that is why we need the interview for VAT. But for mm. LED, the reason why I'll need an interview, one, mm. uh, LED is basically, it's, it's, by the way, it's excise duty. It's a tax called excise duty. The reason why we add on the word local, that's to, to make it lead, is mm. from local industries. Those are the industries that are resident within the country. That mm. is why it takes the name lead. Uh, the reason why I will need an inspection is, one, I need to look at the production line. If mm. this is a manufacturer, mm. I need to see where the production starts up to the end. Can you just give so us some that, of the examples of... Uh, goods that attract uh, that look excise duty uh let me look at water bottled water let me look at soda mm. let me look at uh, juice the juice mm. extracts the fruit the vegetable um mm. the cigarettes so w w i want you to show me the production line mm. of how it moves from that raw material up to the finished item mm -hmm. that i need to see as in existing and second of all, I need proof of um, uh, your suppliers. If you're mm. a manufacturer, then who supplies you mm. with uh, the raw materials that come out with this product? I need uh, a license from uh, a current license from UNBS okay. because this is uh, the organization that certifies mm. the quality of that particular product we are looking at because we want to tax a product that is actually authentic to be on the market. Mm. I will want to see whether you have a trading license. Are you permitted to produce in that particular premise mm -hmm. that we are visiting? And I would like to look at, uh, at a list of the people you employ. Mm. Because actually when you have a production line and when I look at it, it is managed by not less than 20 people. Then it mm. should be reading into your registration. Do you have the pairs you earn on your registration? Mm. Because ideally, you can't do all that when you're about one or two people. That means mm. there are those many people who mm. make that happen at the end of every day. 
So those are the things we basically look at. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we see whether we can register you for local exercise duty. And maybe now the other thing I would like to look mm -hmm. at is a stamp applicator because most of these items are, um, are gazetted for stamping. So if it's, if it's one of the items that are gazetted, I would like to look at your production line towards the end where the stamp mm -hmm. applicator is. Mm -hmm. Because if you have an automated line, a stamp applicator has to come in handy. Unless you're still using the manual application where mm -hmm. you affix uh, the stamps manually mm -hmm. after the production is done. Mm -hmm. And maybe a, a, a stock room is one of the required because mm -hmm. you're not going to sell all that that you produce. You so ideally, I need to look at a stock room. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things that we basically look at. Mm -hmm. And whatever I am specifying here is in the Excise Duty Act of 2014. Okay. So we read the law and make mm, and it. simplify right. it here yeah. for our clients to understand it better. Mm -hmm. So if you, you are starting up a mini factory, a small manufacturing mm. plant, at least take care of what we have said mm. and make sure everything is in hand. Mm. Thank you, Hapsa. Uh, our viewers, those who have just joined us, today's uh, Tax Muchuzi webinar is about uh, obligations of a small and medium business. Uh, Hajat has been taking us through what is a small and micro and medium enterprise. Why should they register? What are the things URA looks out for when you're registering for specific tax heads? And right now we are going to dig deep into the actual discussion of the tax obligations mm -hmm. of the small and medium. So Hafsa, you're going to first take us through what are the obligations of a small and micro Yes. Then we go to the medium ones, those who register as companies. Yes. Yeah. We are live on our Facebook page. It's called the URA page. We are also live on our Zoom, on Zoom, and we are also live on YouTube. Our YouTube channel is called the URA TV. Kindly click that notification bell so that you don't miss out any videos we upload. Hafsa. So when we are looking at obligations, mm. Uh, these are some of the things we expect you to do mm. once you get onto a tax register. Because when I assign you a TIN, that implies that I have registered you on to the register. So what is expected of you? Mm. So generally, let me look at it in a general perspective before we break it down. One, I expect you to, to keep records. Mm. I expect you to issue a receipt or issue an invoice. And on whatever document you issue, your tin should be there mm. so that somebody knows and the directions and the names of uh, your entity mm. so that one can know where to get you after that because it actually helps you before even the taxman comes in. Mm. It helps in advertising your business. What if I've come to buy from you and I need to come back once again and I can't recall? That means when I check on the receipt, the and names are location. clearly there, the mm. location, the contacts. I could Absolutely. easily call you and pr probably place an order before mm -hmm. I probably reach. Mm -hmm. So we want you to keep uh, proper business records. We would like to, uh, we want you to uh, make the statutory deductions in mm -hmm. case they happen. For example, for pay as you earn, if you have people you're employing, that implies that you should make the deductions uh, way before uh, you pay out the salaries. There are those that are statutory. We have local service tax, we have NSSF, then pay as you earn comes in if um, you have people who earn uh, in the excess of 235. So it's a progressive tax because it looks at how you how earn you is earn. how you're going to pay. Mm. So we have the different bands, 235, but not exceeding 335. Then 335, not exceeding 410. Then 410, but not exceeding 10 million. Then in excess of 10 million, it also has its own treatment. Mm. So we expect you to have a list of all that. And uh, we expect you to, if you're employing some people, to give them appointment letters because they clearly spell out what are the benefits they are going to get. Employees. Are they going to get mm -hmm. the transport in kind or in cash? Are they going to get the lunch in kind or in cash? The accommodation, the housing, is, is it in kind or in cash? The reason why I'm specifying this, eh, because normally if they are getting them in kind eh, and they are put at arm, arm's length, that means they are to everybody. Mm -hmm. We do not add them back and uh, tax That's that right. amount. Mm -hmm. So we leave it as is. But if they are gotten in cash, then that means all those amounts should be added back 
then we get what is your gross. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason I was specifying that. We expect you to file returns as and when they are due. If it's an individual, we expect you to give us your return by the third, third by the 30th of September. That is the third month in the financial year of that particular year. We need that provisional return to come in and pay whatever is resultant in that return. If it is a non-individual company, mm. we expect the return by the end of the sixth month. That is by 31st December, we expect the provisional to come in. However, but when this provisional comes in, since the year will be ending on 30th June, June. we could give mm. you a leeway to keep amending it as many times as you would want to keep amending it because business is not static. But you have to make sure that by the 30th of June, whatever you've given us as your provision should be the final. The reason why we put a cut off there because we have, um, we have penalty of understatement of provision. Mm. We look at what is in the provision and what is in the final, and we do not expect a bigger variance in your declarations. That is why we give you that window to keep amending it to match whatever you may put in the final return. And uh, the other thing, we expect you to cooperate with us in case you are in it to come and look at your records, say through an inspection, through mm -hmm. an audit, through any advisory visit, through maybe an inventory check, because at times we do inventory checks mm -hmm. to our clients. Reason, when we look at your return and we see there is a lot of stock and that stock is not moving, I mean, you're not selling, it's not represented in sales. Ideally, it shows me the stock is still there. And I will see you bring in another importation. Mm -hmm. So I will wonder That's whether true. you're a stockist so there's a problem. So mm -hmm. I need to come in and see which stock is there that you're adding on another batch of it. Mm -hmm. So that is when we could be prompted to come in for an inventory check and see and probably advise you of what is not happening well to do it well because what makes you tie a lot of funds in the stock that is it's not, not moving. moving. So actually, w w what prompts these um, various visits we do to you is what you put in your return. What you put in your return will specify where I need to come and look at you. Because at times you may say you have um, maybe borrowed funds here and there. Mm. So we need to come and look at those loan agreements. Then we see how much you're repaying back and what you're repaying back, does it match with the sales you're representing mm. here? Then how do you, how are you going to, how are you going to address the different facilities that you took? So we look at many things before we can come and probably pay you a visit and see what is happening to you. So basically, those are some of the things we look at. Your obligations, we expect mm. you to, co to cooperate with the institution. And maybe you have a right, you have a right to be heard. Mm. We have a right to give you a notice in case we need to come and visit you. You have a right to object to an assessment that mm. you feel is unfair. You mm. have a right to claim your refund, especially in VAT. You claim your mm. refund, but we do not refund amounts that are less than $5 million. And secondly, we don't refund mm. amounts that are not <coughs> on fiscalized documents. This is basically is meant VAT. to promote IFRIS, the use of IFRIS. So we want your input to come through fiscalized documents so that ideally if it translates to a cash refund, mm. we'll be comfortable to approve it and probably give you back the funds. So when we look at obligations, we want you to behave in a particular manner. That is why we call them obligations, to see how best you can fit within those mm. means so that we can even reduce on the cost of enforcement. Mm. Because um, when we have uh, many of our clients not complying, that means the enforcement cost has to go up. We have to do more of hunting for you and looking for you here and there. Which is also an Yet we do to not, we, 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 we are not collecting taxes in that manner. We change the approach in which we are using we want this tax to be human. We need to speak to you with a human mm -hmm. face because we are not collecting for only this year. We will come back next year, even the other year. But we want you so in that sure. proper shape mm -hmm. in which you can voluntarily submit mm -hmm. what you have to submit to URA. Mm. Hafsa, there is a, a situation where I have registered a company and uh, 
I haven't been in business for like a year. Yes. And I haven't notified you. Then at the end of the financial year, URS slaps me with an estimated uh, tax and also a penalty for non-filing and payment. How would you advise businesses that are in such situations? It's just unfortunate that probably there could have been a knowledge gap. Mm -hmm. But ideally, we tell our clients that if the fact that you registered and came to us and gave us your details, it's in the same manner when you get uh, an issue that requires addressing to URA, mm -hmm. you tell us what has changed. Are you still in business? Are you getting challenges that you need to put it aside a bit? Mm -hmm. So please come through and, and inform us. Mm -hmm. Then we will give you a form to fill to deactivate. Deactivate means I freeze your tin for a while mm -hmm. so that no assessment will go through that particular tin. Not until mm -hmm. you come back and tell us now you're resuming business. But you should take note that when you come and um, tell me to deactivate this tin, you do not have any transaction, say in customs, that is coming through that tin, because that will defeat the purpose. If you're telling me that you're struggling in business, and you're the same person who is using your tin to import, should I imagine that you're sharing your tin with somebody or it is you who is not telling us the truth. Mm. So when you come for a deactivation, that will mean that this tin will not be doing anything for that, for the time that it will spend in deactivation. Mm. And we'll wait for you when you've put everything together, then probably you can come back and we can reactivate mm. it. But when you happen to be in such a situation when you didn't know, mm. and ideally you got an estimated assessment mm. through that tin onto yourself, uh, we have a window where you can where you can apply for an objection. You could object to that mm -hmm. and probably tell us what transpired that particular time. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have any business, then you could fill in uh, a new return. Then we look at the reasons why actually you feel we need to vacate the other mm -hmm. assessment. assessment. Exactly. So when we vacate it and you're still in the same condition, then there you will do the deactivation. Then we put it on hold for a time being until you come back. So probably that is what I would wish to comment on that. Mm. Uh, maybe I would like to thank our clients this afternoon for giving us the time to speak to them, uh, for paying your taxes, for walking the journey with us. Mm. We'd like to thank you for the cooperation because our clients are, have actually cooperated with us. Giving us that coin is not the easiest thing more so when we've just come from COVID. We'd like to thank you, appreciate you for all that you've been doing, and I would like to request you to keep doing that, to uh, patch up whatever needs to be patched up. If that return is not yet in, please push it in. Mm. We will not fail to see how to agree with you, then help you move the journey with us. I would like to mm. thank you very much and wish you a blessed day. Thank you, Hafsa, and thank you, our viewers. This has been our webinar tackling tax obligations of the small and medium businesses. Uh, in the studio, I have been with Hafsa Seguia dissecting uh, the obligations of uh, small and medium enterprises. Your host this afternoon is Rita Mzira, and we shall see you next Thursday. May God bless you. I'm called Natmanya Skovia. I came to get a team. I was passing by and I saw a bus, so I was forced to come here and get one. It was not hectic, because it didn't take much time, like five minutes or less. Very happy. I'm still training with National Water, and without a team, you cannot be employed. I encourage everyone out there who is not having a team to come and register, because I know the world that is coming without a team you will not be able to do anything. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda to